Hello YouTube. Today we'll be talking about EU declining in viewerships. And one thing that I think doesn't get brought up enough about why I think that happens. So EU is declining in viewerships. It's been happening for a while. I actually think EU used to be bigger than NA in viewerships. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And a lot of things have been pointing out multiple times. One thing I think doesn't get pointed out enough is that teams don't create enough good content anymore. And that's a major difference between EU and NA right now. And I'll also be talking about why I think that is the wrong model that EU is currently using and why it doesn't help them become better, why it doesn't help the region and why it doesn't help anything. But let's look into the amount of content that they're making. So first, let's look into one thing that I think is a very big problem right now. And we can watch it from UL. I found this clip perfectly. It is the UL's manager. A lot of you guys know him. He makes a lot of great content. He's very out there and doing a lot of stuff for the community. And I really like that. I think he's doing a great job and respect him for that. But here's a problem I have the UL and I think this is the wrong model to have. Just watch this clip. It's going to take a few seconds. And sometimes I ask myself the question, well, oh, wouldn't I maybe like to see the players more in that position? So why do you think you guys as an organization made that decision to have you be more of the face of the team? I'm really happy you're saying that because I would really love to have the players even going more in front of the camera and doing stuff. But at the end of the day, if they don't really want to do it, we cannot force them. Uh, their job is to play on stage and to win. Yeah. Uh, the player's job is obviously to win, right? That is the number one job. But at the end of the day, the job is also to engage with the fans, to build up a brand, to make it better for their teams and make the teams having a more valuable brand. And I think that saying you can't force the players to do sponsor deals is very weird. You look at SKT, SKT is making a lot of sponsor deals, they're the best team in the world. You look at NA teams, they're making a lot of sponsor stuff, they're doing a lot of things for the community to grow their brands and make them more valuable. There's, it's obvious that EO is going to lose viewers if they're not coming out and trying to make content. Now also the amount of content you make matters and the quality of that content. So another thing I want to look at is H2K. Um, the reason I'm looking at H2K and UL is not because I'm singling them out. It's just that I remember this moment from Shuckling Around. And with H2K, I know that I've been looking into them recently, so I know the amount of content they have and what exact content they have. Let's look at H2K's content first of all. So they have a couple of series. They have the H2 What, they have the H2 Tutorials, and they have top 10 players from what I've seen. Um, let's go through H2 What first. So basically, H2 What is from what I've seen. I don't know if I'm allowed to look at the video. I think H2K has a bunch of blogs. I'm not going to do all that. But I'll explain to you what it is. Basically, it's highly edited content with a lot of advertisements for H2K, but it doesn't show anything about the players. There's nothing that connects you to the player from this kind of content, in my opinion. It's just highly edited content that anybody else could have made. For example, I'll make a good example. A lot of streamers are making highlights and having highlight clips on the streams and all of those things. Synapse is making a compilation of those highlights into very good clips that a lot of people enjoy watching. Very high quality content right here. I think the H2 Watch series is exactly similar to this. There's no real difference. It's just highly edited content that you're not actually using the players that you could be using. You're not getting any personality out of them. Now let's look at the H2 tutorials. I haven't watched all of them, but I looked at the latest one. I watched the H2 tutorial episode 31, Favorites LeBlanc Guide. Watching this guide, um, you don't see the player on the camera. You don't see him interacting with it. And honestly, I kind of had the feeling that while watching this, you had the player read up from a script um just saying exactly what's written down and talking about it so afterwards i looked at the h2 tutorials i first looked at the h2 tutorials episode 31 favorite leblanc guide so first of all while watching this guide i did not get any connection to the player there's no camera there's no nothing showing any connection to him and also i kind of got the vibe that he was straight up reading everything up from a piece of paper because i didn't i didn't get any connection to him um, and then the clips, I didn't feel like it really fit the video that much. It was just a bunch of LeBlanc clips. And it was basically just a comparison of LeBlanc clips while a player was reading up a lot of words trying to help people improve. But at the end of the day, I don't feel like that is how you really make a guide. And I do think you could have had more connection to the player. You could easily, just by putting a camera up, making him do it on stream or whatever, and then clip it together better, you could have it... You, you could feel a more connection to the player, I think. So that is something I'm missing. And I think that's the main thing from all of this content that I'm seeing. Is that you don't get a connection at all. Next we'll go the top 10 players never to win EULCS. And the, basically this is just the top 10 um, series that they're having. So basically this series, again, is just 
random top 10 players that they chose that no one else has. It doesn't really have anything to do with H2K aside from the fact that they're advertising H2K and it's on their YouTube channel. Um, it's not specifically H2K players. And it could have been made by any random YouTuber again. And you don't get a connection to the player once more. And I think that's the problem, right? That is why EU LCS is declining in viewers because the players are not being forced out there to make content that connects you to them or they're not willing to like there's a bunch of reasons right but they're not doing it and that is something that i'm missing in the past you had a lot of eu teams doing that and eu was also very big as a region and it was a very popular region and a lot of people enjoyed watching it <coughs> now let's talk about why i think it doesn't help the level of competition so making content that helps you connect to the player isn't me saying oh you have to spend hours upon hours every single day of doing this no you could spend five to ten minutes Every single day, there's not that much, right? Five to ten minutes, and you could easily make content that connected to the player. You also have five players on a team, so if you wanted to make daily content, that's only 30 minutes a day for one player, right? There's not much at all to ask for, in my opinion. Especially not considering how much they're paid and how much they could build their brand by doing that. Um, so the reason I think it doesn't help their competition as well is that obviously money is helpful to improve your infrastructure. And to help your team compete. So by saying that, um, getting a bigger brand by building a fan base up and getting more money means you can have now a chef, you can have more analysts, you can have more people taking off workload of you and helping you improve. You could even afford to have people straight up being a coach for one position only. Imagine having another challenger player straight up just focusing on helping Odo Amna become a better top laner. Odo Amna have a matchup he doesn't understand. He says, you know what? My challenger coach, figure this matchup out for me. Help me out. How do I improve in this matchup? Or he noticed something from um, Oda Amna that Oda Amna is bad at, and he figures out how to fix that. For example, I will give you a good example here. Recently, I did two videos on Jax vs. Fiora. First, I watched Alvari, and I realized how to play the matchup, because first of all, I didn't have an idea. I was really bad in the matchup. I lost every single time, and I just didn't know what to do. So I watched Alfari, I learned how to do it, and I actually started winning that matchup a lot. Then afterwards, I watched Flame, who is Immortal's top laner. <coughs> From watching Flame, I realized he was just like me. He had absolutely no idea how to play that matchup. And I could realize just from that how much help a position coach could be having in that aspect, right? And money helps towards that. Money helps towards building those kind of things for the people and having more money to use to help out the players so they don't have to do everything by themselves. And then also, if you look, NA have to do content, Korea have to do content, and both of those regions are improving right now drastically. While I think Europe has somewhat stagnated, Europe is not really improving as much. If you look at Rift Rivals, Europe got absolutely destroyed. Um, if you look at Worlds, I do think that Europe is going to perform worse than EU, but I might be wrong. You can never know, right? But Europe had been ahead of NA for such a long time, and this is the first time where I have the feeling that NA is actually ahead. There's been times where NA and EU have been even, but I never really felt that NA was superior. But right now, that's the feeling I get. Thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll try to make more content like this. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you guys next time. Hey, thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, remember they have new videos coming to you every single day. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a comment. See you tomorrow, guys.